Once you watch and understand this relatively short and simple video, I guarantee that you will have a better understanding of special relativity than many of the scientists working at places like NASA, Caltech and CERN. I'm sure you have heard stories like this or breaking news, scientists discover new particle that can travel faster than light. This is because they do not understand special relativity. I'm going to explain it to you now and I'm going to make it so simple that once this knowledge spreads, we will be living in a new world of understanding and enlightenment. Okay, very simple. You don't have to do any math to understand what I'm going to say. The math here is for the boffins. Science says the speed of light is roughly 300 million meters per second. How can we test this? They put a reflector on the moon. If they shine a laser on the reflector, it takes light 1.3 seconds to reflect back to Earth. The moon is roughly 400,000 kilometers from Earth. If you do the math, it confirms the speed of light. Scientists understand what I just told you. But what they don't understand is that we are dealing with two concepts here. We are dealing with light and with time. It took me a while to free myself from their confusion. Here is what is happening and I will explain it to you very simply. The speed of light relative to us here on Earth is roughly 300 million meters per second. This is what we call time. The actual speed of light itself is infinite and absolute. Hence, you can never ever move faster than the speed of light. If you hear someone talking about moving faster than the speed of light, then it is because they do not understand special relativity. What you need to know is that 300 million meters per second is the speed of light relative to us here on Earth. You don't need a degree for this. Surely you can understand that a second of time is something that we came up with here on Earth. A second of time is a unit based on how fast our Earth is spinning. A second is relative to Earth. So, if we say that light moves at 300 million meters per second, we are measuring the speed of light relative to time here on Earth. You get that, right? That is not complicated. Now, here is an easy way to understand it using a practical example. And I can tell you that scientists do not understand this. They know about special relativity, but they never really understood this next part. Let's go back to the example of the laser and reflector on the moon. We know that if we shine a light on the laser, it will take 1.3 seconds to return to Earth. So it seems like light needs time to travel. But if I could travel at the speed of light, not close to the speed of light or at the speed of light relative to Earth, but at the actual speed of light. So I travel with the laser to the moon and back. How much time would have passed for me relative to you here on Earth? Science knows this part. They know that time is relative. They know that 1.3 seconds would have passed for you here on Earth. But if I was traveling with the laser at the actual speed of light, no time would have passed for me. You and the Earth would have aged by 1.3 seconds, but no time will have passed for me. We see this concept or theme in many sci-fi movies. It's because science understands this part of special relativity. It's called time dilation. This is why some scientists talk about moving faster than the speed of light. They think it took light one second to move 300 million meters. So they think it took 1.3 seconds to go to the moon and back. You can see why they would be confused. I bet you are too right now. It took the light from the laser 1.3 seconds to make the journey to the moon and back. So it seems like it actually takes light time to travel. Yet we know from special relativity that if I could move with the laser at the speed of light, when I get back to Earth, you will have aged 1.3 seconds, but I would still be the same age. It would have taken me zero time. What are they missing? 
This is the fundamental problem scientists have. That is why they cannot figure out what the universe is. The speed they are calculating as the speed of light is only the speed of light relative to us here on Earth. They are not applying special relativity. Light itself does not experience time. Light moves at the speed of light. When you move at the speed of light, no time passes from your perspective. When they shine a light on the moon, 1.3 seconds passes here on Earth and then we see the light. They are calculating the speed of light relative to us here on Earth, which is actually the rate of time here on Earth. The actual speed of light itself is infinite because light does not experience time. If you move at light speed, zero time passes. It took the light zero time to move from Earth to the moon and back. Light has no mass and experiences zero entropy. This is the conservation of information. The light is eternal. Therefore, you can never ever move faster than light. It is not a matter of making something fast enough. How can you do something that takes zero time? The entire concept is impossible. You will never ever move faster than the speed of light. The speed of light is absolute. You can of course move faster than time relative to us here on Earth. And this is where all the confusion comes from. As I said, if you can understand this, and it is really simple if you go and think about it, then you are living in a new world of enlightenment and understanding. Because this affects everything we think we know about the universe, and especially the age of the universe, which science has based on how long they think it took the light from the Big Bang to reach us here on Earth. They think the universe is only 13.75 billion years old, based on the speed of light relative to Earth. The universe is in fact eternal.